What's up, y'all? Um, all right, hold on. All right. You got hey, everyone, it. it's uh, Ricky Ortiz. <laughs> it's That Raw, owner of El Camino. Um, here with my friend, Karen V, starting up this podcast deal. You know, my first <laughs> attempt, our first attempt, I think. Yes. Um, wanted to do something fun that, you know, we've never done before, and, and we wanted to talk about how we got here and uh, the creation of the Ice JJ Fish video. Um, the very viral. Yeah, very JJ viral. Video. Yeah. How the, many millions does it got? Does it have uh, collectively, but yeah. probably well over 200 million, but on YouTube, it's like 80 million. Yeah. Something like that. Um, but yeah, want to talk about why we shot it uh, and what we've been doing over the last nine years and where it took us and all that stuff. And, you know, introduce you all to Karen and myself. Um, I know everyone knows who, you know, Karen is obviously from, from the video and, and how big it blew up and stuff, but not a lot of people know that I'm the one that shot the video and edited right. and, you know, kind of the, the brains behind it. Um, it was actually our mutual friend tank that sent me a video of ice JJ fish singing to thuggish ruggish bone <laughs> in his room. You know, back then, <laughs> he was just some, I think he was like 19 or 18 at the time. He had to be wow. super young. And he was just singing in his room, like, you know, with his loud, crazy, killing a cat sound, <laughs> you know, voice. And, his angelic uh, voice. The voice of an angel. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Something told me to make a music video with this dude. And Karen's actually the, you're the first one that I called. Yeah. Um, you know, I had this idea. I'm like, okay, you know. I had already reached out to Fish and and uh, Tank had helped me. You know, we got his contact and stuff like that. We Which, reached out to him. What did you say in that original? I was. Like, it was pretty brief. It yeah. was just straight up like, "Yo, man, like I live in Texas. I do music videos. Like, let me fly you down, put you in a hotel. <laughs> you know, I'll pay you." So you we'll, did all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, I put him up at the Tropicana in downtown San Antonio. <laughs> uh, you know, we booked the flight. Immediately after him confirming that he would do it, that's when mm. I called you, mm. and uh, and you know we were both. I mean, I was in my mid twenties at the time. And, yeah, you, know, you were you were pretty young and twenty three. Uh, I yeah, think twenty three, something yeah. like a couple years younger, right? Yeah. So, um, I was like, man, like I want to do this video, and and it was almost the whole music video was already in my head, like of how I'm gonna how I'm gonna I do this. I didn't it. even hear it on the floor. He had sent it. <gasps> uh, uh, no, actually, no, I'm, I'm tripping. On the floor was mm -hmm. actually shot. He did the same type of video, and that went viral in his bedroom. And that's super viral. It did like two hundred thousand views, right? You mean the same song? The same that song. He was acapella. Or yeah, whatever. He, he he was just acapella and it, it, singing it in uh -huh. his room with no real music uh -huh. behind it and stuff like that. I think he played the beat in the background. Yeah, I gotta find it. We'll yeah. we'll drop it in here if we find it. But anyway, I heard that song, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, this this song is a music video. Oh god. And uh, I think the whole thing played out in my head, and I told Tank, I'm like, yo, we gotta get this guy down here and like convince him to do it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. Um, we made the deal to to bring him down, and I mean, I brought him down like a week later. Right. Immediately hit you up. You said you were down, and um, you know we started shooting the videos. We actually uh. shot three videos. It was uh the third <laughs> one. The sorry, the first one went did pretty decent. It yeah. hit a, it hit a mill like in a day. That was like the black and white one. The black right? and white when he one. Was yeah, like, no, I think it was like no topping you what, or something. What like did that. you? Uh, what was the video from? Like, what were you trying it to? Was D'Angelo? Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. He was yeah. just yeah. like. Yeah, I think my sister. I forgot who was helping. I'm pretty sure it was Naomi. It was, I'm pretty, I think my sister like helped lather him up and like yeah. grease oil him up, him up. <laughs> oil him mm -hmm. up and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was like kind of swole. He had a little six pack and stuff. I know. I'm like, it man. looked good. Like yeah. the videography in itself was good. So that yeah. show was hilarious. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but but we posted that one, you know, and it went, you know, mini viral. It got even surprised him because I mean, you know, it got a million a day on that one. Uh, maybe two days or something like that, mm -hmm. but it didn't hit the way on the floor was it hit because oh, no. we put a lot more time into on the floor. I mean, at the time, you know, it's like, well, I don't even know. think we knew what on the floor was going to do. Nah, I would have been happy with <laughs> 2 million, 3 million. And that's but... what you were like telling me like, Hey, there's this, there's this guy. I didn't even know who he was. So I was like, I, I mean, I guess like, sure. It sounded fun. So I'm like, eh, why not? Let's do it. Um, and then when I got there, what did you get me into? <laughs> it was yeah, it was weird. It definitely was weird, but I think I mean it was funny. You well, know, it was we were, funny. Yeah. And then people were like, "How did you manage to stay so serious throughout the whole thing?" I don't know. I just saw it like a job, and I was just like, 
<laughs> I was the video vixen, so yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, you have like modeling experience and stuff well, yeah. like that, and like right. you know, there's like not necessarily acting, but I mean, you do well, act, you, right? You, you gotta, gotta play, you gotta play yeah, a role, you gotta, like, you, gotta, a role. Exactly. you gotta get in the zone. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, so, that was a. Uh, I think that, that was, was uh, very interesting, and the fact that it happened at a time, you know, that it was everything was so new, so it wasn't like now where like you said everything can go viral super quickly and we're seeing viral things every single day like it was just a totally different um environment yeah. social environment and even. to come out of san antonio i think was even more unexpected mm. people here were shocked that the the video was you know from san antonio well they weren't even sh they were it's not that they were shocked but they were mad like people were so mad they were like, why are y'all doing this? You're, get, you're giving us a bad light. Like, yeah. do you remember comments like that? Yeah, but I mean, San, it's San Antonio. We're, I know. We're I'm the like, Florida we already give ourselves a bad light. So, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. We're literally like the Florida of Texas. Some weird stuff is always happening here. Yeah. And, you know, we don't make national news for anything good unless it's the Spurs winning or something like that. I mean, that. at least that. But, no Spurs. But, yeah, that was, uh, that was fun. So, yeah, you know, we, we shot the video, uh, went to the Hay Street Bridge, and I don't even know how... Like <laughs> we got this dude to start dancing, but that was just kind of what really set it off. I mean, the dance I think aside it from was the singing, the dancing. Yeah. I think it was the dance. I mean, the intro where he's just Bro. you know <laughs> doing his thing. <laughs> the show was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, so you know, we shot the video, it went viral. Um, he blew up, obviously. I mean, you know, for you know, for the funny video, right? But he ended up getting signed to that. What was that that old the, the one that the one that discovered Lil Pump that record label? Which one? I forgot what it was called. I don't know. Yeah, all of the lights or lights something. Anyway, I'll that. look it up. But but yeah, he, he he had gotten signed to that production company or mm -hmm. to that that record label. Yeah. And uh and they tried to go like throw big guns at it and and World Star got behind it. I know the mm -hmm. the main dude from World Star like funded his next video, and they had like flew him out and took him to. Miami wow. and went to the the, the owner oh, of World yeah, Stars he Mansion. Was, like, living it up. Yeah, he, yeah. he had girls and stuff like yeah, all in the video, like Bentley, like the whole. I remember nine. that. Yeah, it was like true like rap. Yeah, style it was like video. a real rap like video. Real like rap they busted video. out like the big cameras yeah. and they went all out with the production. And I think the thing only got a couple million views. That's the crazy thing, and I always look at that. It's like we just did a random video. We shot it at Eisenhower Park. Yeah, and <laughs> and La Cantera. I know, with me and then my cousin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, you forgot you had your cousin in the video. Priscilla. <laughs> she was like, girl, you don't know how many people were like asking me, is that you? <laughs> she didn't know what to do because at the time she was going to school. But yeah, it was just such a random thing, you know, and that got that many, I guess, because it was just so, I don't know, expected and not. Sometimes when you try to overdo it, it just doesn't hit the same. Yeah, I think you know? so. And I think, you know, Again, not every video going viral back then, you know, not having as much uh, content circulating. We didn't have TikTok. True. We didn't have IG Reels. Yeah. We didn't have any of that. Right. So for a video to go viral back then was pretty much only YouTube. You right. couldn't even get a, a video count on Facebook at the time. I think yeah. that wasn't even a thing yet. It was YouTube. Yeah, it was, it was just YouTube. Right. And then World Star was able to see you were able to right. see view counts on there. Right. But YouTube was was, was the big one it still yeah. is. But, you know, like I said, like you said, now TikTok and, and Instagram uh, you can have you can go viral just on those platforms, right? Um, anyway, so I think that you know that was a big factor in it that he had shot that music video, it dropped, and it just didn't get that same amount of push because uh -huh. it was only on one or two platforms. Versus now, it's where here we are, like nine, ten years later, and we're seeing a resurgence in in his popularity again. Like you got that dude from the from the Roots. <laughs> the drummer like sharing it and then you got celebrities you know all posting his shade room all the time shade room posts shade them like at least once a month so like much. Yeah. they're posting them all the time i know yeah it's crazy and people remember yeah they'll never forget never. that's that's it yeah. lives on on the internet we made history we really did <laughs> Early in the game, though. Yeah. Early in the game, you know. But you know, I, I, it was pretty cool to see the YouTube. Uh, I think they posted a Twitter where it said like most viral video for the last two weeks or something like that. Yeah. It was some like streak of mm -hmm. of, of viralness that it had. Yeah. Where it was the the most watched video in so the world. So definitely social media history, if anything. Yeah, for know? sure, for sure. Yeah. But you know, kind of to go into it a little bit, like where we yeah. are now. I mean, I think since then, for me, you know, I kind of dropped the ball a little bit because. You know, I didn't really focus on keeping that going. I had another couple viral videos 
with uh with Michael Trapson, the dude that I uh, remember dresses like, I yeah. was in that too. Yeah, yeah, you were in one of those too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, there she is. Yeah. And then we actually tried again with, with Fish. We took him to, Den- yeah. to Denver and we did, and a, we did a Christmas we one. We went to Breckenridge and we, we did the did. Christmas one up in we the mountains. Did. And it just, it wasn't the same. I was shocked that that one didn't hit though, because yeah. that was such a good, you know, follow up. good follow up. I mean, yeah. it's a Christmas theme thing and we were in the mountains mm-hmm. in the snow. But anyway, I mean, it did all right. It got a couple million. But, um, you know, I, I, kept doing my video thing was trying to find my niche and stuff like that but eventually Mm -hmm. i kind of just stopped doing music videos because it was you know i felt like it was just kind of pointless you know um got back into actually i I started marketing other businesses that's kind of what that's what you were doing yeah yeah brought me here right Mm -hmm. um but anyway what 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 opportunities did ice jj fish bring you like along the way i mean obviously like you know you grew in popularity a lot of people knew Mm -hmm. who you were uh knew who you are and you know you blew up i mean your instagram you know you you went to you know million close to a million followers and stuff like that and then other platforms you know you were blowing up i remember Mm -hmm. you posted a video on the youtube thing just reading Reading reviews and people you know were 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 interested in you yeah you know i feel like you know you did some so a few we did some damage yeah for sure (laughs) but what were there any opportunities that came out of ice jj fish after absolutely it gave me networking opportunities. I got to work with really big brands. Um, I got to do, I guess what you would call as an influencer, you know, make money from social media. One of the earliest people to be able to do that. And that's huge because at the time, you know, it was still so new for everybody. It was still so new for me. I didn't expect that. And again, we've been in the game. We've had skin in the game so long that at the time, you're just like, what do you do with it? You know, everybody was kind of doing, you know, since it was so new, everybody was kind of doing the same thing. So it's hard to kind of find a direction, especially when you don't have that support um, or you don't have the people that behind you that you needed, right? Because I feel like I could have took, taken it way far in a different way um, if I had just had that team, like you said, that support that um, would have helped me in some way because I really didn't know. <laughs> I was just kind of going with it. But even just going with it, I was traveling a lot, going to Cali, getting a lot of photo shoot opportunities, getting opportunities to work with brands, businesses, stuff that I probably wouldn't have, I don't know if I would have done as large of a scale that I did. Um, I got to work with Civil Clothing, who is now huge. They've turned it into, um, is it Dark Sport? No, what is that? I'm not sure, but I remember Civil. mm -hmm. I think it's still Civil. I remember seeing one of the- It's still Civil, but the guys, I just got to see early on, like meet with some really cool people in Cali that, started brands early on and now they're huge dark sport so they created dark sport one of the biggest um fitness wear brands out there really really cool message too but those are the same guys that i worked with that civil and it's just really cool to see people you know grow almost 10 years later because it's been about i want to say 10 19 yeah, years. 10 years yeah and so i was little i was a little freaking girl at that time i want to say um and now i'm 23 now i'm 33 so just so much has changed in that way but um yeah, it's been a it's been a it's been a ride. Um, and the fact that I've gotten to, you know, have a platform where I can speak to people and influence and talk to an audience about whatever I really want to I'm passionate about. is so cool because some people never get that, you know. Yeah, for sure. And so I think that's a blessing. And it can also be a curse. Right. Because you've got to also learn how to you get lost. And I think that's what happened to me is I started to because who I was an ice JJ fish. Like the dancing, that was just me, right? That wasn't, um, like we didn't, I just started dancing, right? And we, you freaking added it in there. I was all like, Rick, why did you do that? Because I was all, oh my God, I'm going to get so much shit talked to. <laughs> like I was embarrassed. But then once you start getting the comments and the worst things, like you get really tough skin. And so I think it helped me um, like not care what people say and just learn to be myself. And because it was so viral, right? So I was like, all right, whatever. Um, but then you just get lost in it. You get lost in who you are. Um, cause I've been doing it for so long, you know? And so, yeah, I think that I had to kind of gain back my identity cause I rooted my identity in my social media. And so I think that's why I said the blessing and a curse, because when you have a big platform, you're like, oh, I got to do something with it. I got to do something with it. And when you don't, and you don't know what to do, right. You feel almost like a failure. 
um, you just feel pressure almost for no reason. And so, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a lot, you got a huge following, you got like yeah. kind of an expectation to continue like doing things that are going to get attention or, exactly. you know, but go viral yep. or whatever. Right. And but, how far will you push for that? And exactly. we're seeing that now with TikTok and with all these young kids, with these younger minds that now that I've matured more, I realize all these things, but you know, I can't imagine being in this space and having social media early on like that to that level to where now it's all about attention. And yeah. so you got to constantly stay relevant and stay relevant. And so that was tough. Um, I think on, and probably more on myself than anybody, right. We're our biggest, you know, enemies sometimes. And so I think that that's the pressure that I felt is I have to do something with it. I have to do something with it. I have to make money or like, I have to say things a certain way for this brand or like, because that's where I was, you know, making a great income and thankfully, right. I'm very blessed to be able to do that. But you know, you also, like I said, you get lost. You want to look like everybody else. Um, you're constantly comparing. You think your life isn't as great because you're only seeing a certain part of people's lives. And that is very real. It's very real. Um, and like I said, you have to, just kind of step out of that and find a direction. And I think that's where I'm at. I'm in a good, I'm in a good place now where I'm able to see that and step back and be like, all right, I no longer, I no longer need this. Um, you know, this isn't my identity. This is just what I do. And so I think it's been a big change for the better. So um, would you do another <clears throat> ISJJ fish video? I mean, <laughs> that's the, that's what everybody wants to know, right? <laughs> that's the big question. I mean, I, I think I would definitely. It'd be funny. I thought yeah. about it. I was like, you know, he's on his, he's on his, uh, <laughs> his religious yeah. route now and, and, and yeah. stuff like that. I actually messaged him. The, he said something. What do you say? He, um, I told him like, yo man, like we need to do like a gospel album with you and like, you know, we could do it at a church and stuff. And stuff. But, but he oh said that being, that, 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 that going for doing things for popularity is a sin. So I'm like, all right, well, maybe, you know, you know I, let's, I respect let's get that. It through. I respect, I respect that, that too. That. I'm like, all right, different angle. Do let's thing. do it for Jesus. You know, yeah, let's do it for that. Let's hey, do be, it. So I think it would be dope. Word. Imagine fish get the in, word. in all white robe yeah. <laughs> at white sands, like just sand all around like Jesus a boy's to men. Jesus was funny. Jesus was funny. Jesus, yeah, it's okay. Part-time we can comedian. Exactly. You know, we can laugh. We can <laughs> not at Jesus, but at, at the whole video. But yeah. Yeah. The funnier thing for me is like whenever I see you, you know, you post and stuff like that, there's always that one or two comments still. It's like felt. something about your girl. Never felt. Or, so yeah. I'm known as the, there's something about you, girl, girl, you know, but I don't care. That's kind of cool because at least I'm not known as like, oh, like. Sure, I, Keisha. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the, <laughs> I mean, th I think for all the things that have gone oh, viral in the last 10 years, I mean, it's not no. too bad. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of funny. Like I don't have naked pictures on the internet is what yeah. I mean. Like I, you can't say like, oh, this girl's only got yeah. famous because of her butt or something, you know? Yeah, no, you're literally just right. the I'm, ice I'm, And girl. I'm in clothes. Yeah. I'm, it's not like I'm nude or anything. Like, you know, no, how you're you, wearing like jeans, like know, jean shorts jean or shorts. something like that. Yeah. And it's just funny. It's just the most simple things. Like it just trips me out still, you know, because I feel like now people just, it's overdone. Everybody has to be a vulnerable. Everybody has to be a certain way. And like, it's just ugh, like stuffy in a way. So yeah, I think I feel like the social media thing, like something has to, I don't know, change. Everybody's almost doing the same thing now, you know? It's yeah. like, how do you be, how, how do you become original these days? Like, so I don't know. <laughs> what was your favorite part of working with like, well, actually, never mind. We were that. What? <laughs> like, describe what it was like working with fish. Because I mean, you you had the whole experience from the, in Dude. a different way. I'm just shooting. I'm behind the camera. I mean, like, what was going through your head when you? He were... was so chill. I think he only said like five words to me. I think he was high. I don't know. He was super high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He probably had to. He's like, I don't want my anxiety going up through the, through the roof, you know. But yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, it was fine. He was cool. I was just like, this is weird, but whatever. I'm just gonna get it done. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. So with, you know, after <laughs> the video blew up, uh, you know, you're starting to get a lot more opportunities and stuff like that. What are your like kind of like highlights, like what brands or what companies have you worked with aside from I know you mentioned civil mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But what else have you done that's been like kind of like next level for you, like things that you never thought you would do? So I worked with Espinosa's Le Leather. Shout out to Eric. Um, they were in Cali and they were, they're huge now. They're like on the Mayans, um, that show, the motorcycle, the bicycle. Oh, they do the outfits for that? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 
and they've been doing it, you know, since then. So it's just really cool to see people grow. Lexus, I've had opportunities with Lexus. Um, Paula's Choice is a huge skincare brand now that's everywhere. It's in Sephora, and I was working them with them when they were doing organic um, marketing. So I'm trying to think. I want to say I did a lot, but I can't even. I'm like brain farted. No, you're fine. Do you remember any? Huh? No, I can't remember any, oh, any aside from those. You know, you did civil. You had a few other big ones in there. Um, the ones that you mentioned. I know you did the the that leather company that does the. I stuff did from Lions. Um, Bang Energy when they were you know at the top of the top when they were popping. <laughs> That's crazy. What did you do for them? Photo shoot or like video stuff? No, they, I was just doing sponsorships. Oh, so okay. yeah, I did a lot of sponsorships with different brands. So they were one of them. They were one of my biggest ones. Um, and it was when Bang was everywhere. You know, everybody. Circa 2017. Um, a lot of the fitness stuff is what I really got into. Allo Yoga, somebody that I worked with too that were sponsoring me as well. So it's not even just about like there's so many opportunities and, and ways to work with a brand um, besides obviously making money, you know, just getting that exposure. And I think at the time it was all about getting exposure because you could grow organically, you know? Yeah, so, for sure. And now it's like, oh my gosh, it's such a different algorithm. Now there's an algorithm that didn't even exist back then. It was or just, maybe it did, but we maybe didn't know. It did, but we, we just didn't, didn't know. know like how it worked. Well, now I, I feel like when you posted, you posted, and that was it. Like it just appeared, and now it's like all manufactured, and like there's just like hoops you got to jump through and things you got to do. Like it just, I feel like these days it's harder to grow. You have to have more of a strategy, whereas then it was more. I feel like now it's more geared towards businesses and then it was geared more towards just people like being social. And I think it's actually easier to blow up do now. Do you? Yeah, for sure. Tell me why. I think, why if, do you think, I think that? if we shot Ice JJ Fish again today and it didn't exist in the past, I think it'd go even more viral than you think like, so? on a, just a whole nother level. Yeah. Um, Maybe because of TikTok. Like, man, TikTok. Do you, do you ever get on TikTok? Hardly, but I, I'm, I'm familiar with the stuff that's on there. I know okay. there's some crazy stuff on there, too. Yeah, yeah. But every platform has so many more followers now so users I mean, yeah, you know true. youtube has grown i mean i don't know how many you know hundreds of millions of people that were on it back then but now yeah. it's billions facebook is billions instagram you know facebook owns instagram all that stuff tiktok this is the whole thing now i think that that is definitely easier to blow up now i mean we mm -hmm. said now that like this viral content happening every other day and true. It's, but, but specifically the silly stuff you know what I'm saying? It's harder to go viral as a business, right. but I think it's also more possible today than it was, you know, back right. then. There's more tools and resources, you back know. Back then you had to spend a lot of money as a business yeah. to even get any sort of, you know, yeah. traffic on your business page and stuff like that on Facebook. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're kind of a, a good example of it with El yeah. Camino, uh, you know, with my, my marketing manager, Andrew, and, 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 you know, myself, you know what I'm saying, where we've come up with ideas and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it kind of shows like in the... On the back end, you know, we're super consistent with posting content, you know, reels every other day, every mm -hmm. day, stuff like that, you know, funny content, you know, yeah. at least once or twice a week, there's always some something, you know, fresh and creative that they're making and, and, and you know, posting and stuff like that. And I mean, it shows in our following and it shows in the revenue mm -hmm. for the business. Back then, we didn't have none of that. You know what I mean? Like there was right. no IG reels or TikTok and stuff like that for businesses to go viral. So I think it's, it's a lot easier today. Um, but I think the key is like, you know, the consistency part of it and then having right. the, having the team in house to, to I do think that, that you also know? is you have a really good team. Yeah. So, you know, that helps a lot back then, you know, I was able to, to, even though I didn't keep pursuing the music video thing and, and making just, you know, tons of viral videos or anything like that, I kind of shifted directions cause I, you know, I wanted to make money right. and, right. and working with artists rappers you know there's silly no viral money, no guys money. there's no money yeah. in that you yeah. know what i'm saying like they hardly right. have any money to pay for right. a 500 hundred dollar music video package and then they can you know they complain like oh why are you doing this for fish you could have put those resources behind <laughs> an artist in the city i'm like you don't even have the money to pay for it you know so right. uh, but anyway i wanted to get out of that space because you know i felt like i was just spinning my wheels like mm -hmm. it's fun you know to be creative and and you know, do silly stuff and, you know, yeah. have fun with it. Right. But at the same time, I mean, we got to eat and pay right. bills and, and all that. And what's the overall goal and the purpose? What's the you goal? Know? You know what's what I'm saying? Goal? So yeah. for me, I think after the video, um, you know, and, and kind of stepped away for a bit from doing music videos, uh, I was thinking to myself, I was like, how can I really make money off of this thing? I'm not talking like a little money. I want to make a lot of money. Yeah. You know, being a director, I'm like, okay, that's a path. You know, you could build up your name and stuff like that. But you know, it didn't not not even that it was a time issue, like oh, I can wait 10 years, 15 years to be a famous director. I'm like, do I really want to keep doing music videos? I've always been interested 
from, even in that time, like seeing opportunity in other people, right. you know, to, yeah. to blow up their business. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? For Fish, it was like just knowing that if he made a, a decently shot music video, it would go viral. It would do something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? For It'd you, make an impact. Yeah. for calling you to be in it, yeah. I'm like, yo, like she's going to blow up off of this. And, it, yeah. and, and if anything, she's going to make the video blow up because <laughs> it's, it gives it that much more shock value. Right. It's like, yo, this right. dude's singing fucking terrible. <laughs> Right, terribly. And there's this hot and chick like, there's there, this like, chicken what's going like, on? Yeah, like, what's going on? So, and it worked, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it did. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I've always had that mentality to, to you know, see that in mm-hmm. people or in products or businesses. So it actually kind of put me on my path to, you know, getting more into marketing and learning right. as much as I could. Um, you know, I'm self-taught. I mean, Google and YouTube and, you know, I a bunch of marketing books and, and yeah. e-books and stuff like that to try and learn about you know, how marketing works, advertising, you know, and working with businesses and stuff. And I landed a few really good gigs. I mean, there was a performance shop that I ended up uh, handling, you know, the marketing for was like Performance HQ. And, I you know, yeah. I did the the IV therapy thing. I mean, it was yeah. always based around, I was always trying to get, get gigs that were based around a service or a product. Mm-hmm. You know, at the performance shop, I went in and, you know, negotiated a really good salary and was able to, you know, turn a business from zero to you know, a ton of money in like yeah. the mar- in the window tent department or, mm, uh, you know, the anything. performance yeah. department, stuff like that. Right. Uh, the IV therapy thing. I mean, I love that stuff because one, I'm a customer of it, but two, it's like you're selling a product. Right. You know, but yeah. and then even when I went to the strip club, you know, I actually <laughs> got that gig because, well, even because me and my brother was was uh, was well known in, in the industry. Mm-hmm. But um, I kind of took it more from approach uh, uh, an angle of. I proposed it as like, hey, let me be a manager, but let me handle the marketing for the club. Yeah. You know? And and I Ricks, was like, I right? could yeah, no, it was uh, a no, uh, perfect one? ten. Perfect ten. Yeah. You so, were at perfect ten? Yeah. What? That's where I was, yeah. Perfect ten. Oh, that's was, right, that's right, that's right. You were at Rick's though before. Yeah, yeah, but right. that was valet. Actually, so I had the valet company oh. and I was, you know, doing the parking You've cars. Always thing. Been doing something. Yeah. You Entrepreneur. Stay, staying staying busy. I mean, yeah. I've never been able to keep a job for more yeah. than three days. My wife always laughs because it's like, oh, I used to work there for like three or four days. <laughs> I mean, legit, like I worked at Little Caesars for two days. I worked oh my at, gosh, you don't like being yeah, told what to I worked, do. I think my longest jobs ever were Foot Locker. I did Foot Locker for two years. That was fun because I mean, it's shoes, you know, so mm-hmm. you always get a discount and stuff like that and all that. But it was Foot Locker and then uh, the strip club. That Definitely was it. Definitely entrepreneur. Yeah. Strip can't, club can't for like six, seven or eight years or something like that collectively. Uh, and and selling shoes. Other than that, I've never <laughs> held a job longer than oh six my months. Gosh. Love it. Yeah, a few days. Love it. But uh, that's a good story. <laughs> but yeah, so you know, getting into the strip club was my last job actually. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, how you long know, were you there for? Like three years. Again, like well, collectively, when collectively. I had the valet company, I had strip mm. club contracts doing valet parking. But you know, after my brother's accident, you know, right. he had passed and everything like that. Um, uh, I wanted to get back into the club just because I was like, okay, well, I want to open a bar. You know, but maybe I need to stay busy and and go work in a bar Before. just so I can get back into the yeah. the mind frame of, of of you know doing something. And it was no like time stamp on it. it was I wasn't like like okay, well I'm gonna go work in the club for X amount of time and then I'm gonna open a bar. Right. It's like my brother's accident happened, um, and I just needed to keep myself busy because mm-hmm. I was alone and and you know dealing with all the the grieving part of all of it, right? From from losing him. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, you know what? The the strip club would be a real fun place to go you know do a brainless kind of like you know a mindless, right, mindless thing, thing that, that ju- that's thinking. just gonna keep me busy and just yeah. maybe have fun yeah you know what i'm saying go you know i mean the club environment's fun you know what i'm saying is, I, mean, I don't yeah. drink a whole lot or whatever and but you you're really out you're social about anything you know yeah you're, you're social just, you're always yeah. around people and stuff like right. that you know uh so anyway so it kind of did help but what do you call it um it didn't last long i mean at my, at, in the end i knew that it was just a stepping stone to get into doing my own thing. I wanted to open up a bar. I mean, before my brother was killed, you know, we we were shopping for, you know, spots up in Colorado. We were like, yo, maybe we can move to Colorado remember, and go yeah. get connected up there and go do the dispensary thing. Mm-hmm. Go work in a dispensary. Yeah. Let's learn the game so we can we can go do our own thing. That didn't happen. So we started talking about doing a bar in San Antonio and we were shopping around for spaces and stuff like that because he was tired of working for the the guys he was working for running uh-huh. their bars. He ran like five, six bars. Yeah, I remember. You know, something like that. So getting into the bar industry was, he was already in it, mm-hmm. but it was a goal for me to like, you know, help fund it and do it together 
like well, let's just open up our own place so right. you don't got to go work for these guys you're making them all this money let's make our own money right because from my end it was like if the deal was is like okay you're going to manage it you you know you're already working the bars mm-hmm. i don't have much experience in, in running bars uh you do so it's like i'll i'll help fund it you help fund it we put our money together let's open up a bar and, and, and you run it but then you know his accident happened and life change and everything like that um so yeah so anyway getting getting into the club was just kind of a a thing to kill some time, but also kind of with a goal in mind. It was, right. you know, start my own thing. So um, you were going to do it you, with, obviously with Mondo in mind, you know? Yeah, for sure. You know, but, that. you know, he wanted to do a, like a craft cocktail bar, yeah. something real, yeah. like intimate, you yeah. know, and I, I, I knew enough at the time to know that that was, that's kind of something you do on your third run. Mm-hmm. You know, like if you're like two, three businesses in, that's then you, you then you do something more crafty and like got it more you know specialized it, more specialized because the the revenue is not the same like yeah. you know sports bars and dive bars make more money than most of the time make more money than craft cocktail bars also the cost is is much higher so i knew that i knew, I knew enough of that early on to know that the first concept needed to be something that was going to be a cash cow got it. you know so um i opened up el camino that was kind of the, the deal I, I was i was in the club uh met my wife and you know, <laughs> we were just she, talking she was about not that dancing. earlier too. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> she wasn't dancing. Not on the pole. She, she was, was not on the pole. We assure you. Oh, <laughs> uh, she was my liquor rep. You know, what I'm saying, selling me, you know, selling alcohol, uh, selling all the, yeah. the high end boozes and scotches and stuff like that. And um, got married pretty quick. I mean, three months in, three, four, four months in, something like that. Then we met in November. We got, we got, we got engaged. In, Hold up, you got married that quick? No, no, we didn't get married that quick. We got engaged. So, but you got engaged really yeah, quick. Yeah, really fast, yeah. Okay, so it's like answer, March. answer this question for me. When a man knows, he knows pretty for quickly. For me, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. for you, right? But yeah. in general, I see that pretty often. It's like sometimes, side note, women will be with a man for years and he will never ask her. But I feel like if a man wants to get married with you, he's going to know pretty quickly. I, I mean, I think it's too general of a, of a statement to say like that every guy is like that. A lot of mm-hmm. guys are just kind of stupid. Well, and then a lot I of guys mean, don't think mature in, the, in those men, terms. I mean, but when you're at that, for me, yeah. I know for me, it was like an instant thing. It was like, it was pretty, pretty quick into it. I'd say it was like within two months, it was already in my mind. And then, right. with it, and then, and then the third month it was in my mind so much that I couldn't, I had to, to, act to, to do, do that something. and act on it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It wasn't an instant day one thing, but I, I think no. the thoughts were were in my head right. already pretty early on, like yeah. a few weeks in. It's just the idea of it, you know, and I only had ever experienced that, like they, I think something like that, like once before. But I also knew pretty early on that you just know it ain't going to work. You know what I'm saying? But right. with, with my wife, it was like never that feeling at all. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just you know, it was good. It was different. It was yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we got engaged uh, and, and as soon as we got engaged. I was pretty much checked out of the strip club. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I didn't care anymore. It right. was an instant, I think, reality check for me. It was a, a wake-up call. It was like, okay, like, you came here with knowing that you're going to kill time, you're going to get yourself out of the house, stay social, and learn about, you know, managing a bar. But now I'm getting married, and I know that I probably want to have, I didn't say probably, I knew I wanted to have kids with mm-hmm. her. You know, and and, you know, that was all in the game plan. So I'm like, well, you know, I didn't want to quit my job and I didn't. But I checked out. I mean, I'd say like, you know, when we got engaged, you know, in March, something like that, I pretty much stopped like just even trying. I would Mm -hmm. sit in the corner (laughs) and like girls would come up and like, you know, I got to manage the strippers and stuff like that. I wouldn't even pay attention to them. (laughs) I would just be on my phone all day, you know, or having lunch with, 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 uh, with, with my at the time fiance and you know, taking trips. I was going out, we, we were going out of town all the time and stuff like uh, that. So it pretty much caught up to me. It was like six yeah. months later. I had actually already signed on, on doing, uh, El Camino. Um, was this before, after Holy so, Smoke or no, the Holy Smoke didn't even happen yet. So, oh. so I had, was only going to do El Camino. Okay. Um, I was gonna do a food truck park with a cocktail bar. And mm. so I signed the lease that January and then got engaged shortly after. It was something like that. Mm-hmm. So so we had already signed on the lease. It was like the beginning of 2018. And I had time to, you know, get the doors open and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, get everything working. But, you know, being checked out from the club got me in a little bit of trouble over there. I got <laughs> fired, basically. You know, yeah. so it was like June or July or something. It was like middle of summer, end of summer. And, uh, you know, I had lost a job. So I'm like, right. there goes my income and all that stuff. So anyway... Right. Holy, that's where Holy Smoke was born. I'm oh, like, okay, I like, see. you know, I was getting help. We were getting help from our families. We were, you know, 
scraping the plate pretty much. I was yeah. doing whatever I could to hustle up money. And, um, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm in the middle of opening a bar. I'm probably going to go broke if I don't do something right now. So I, I went to act. Yeah, I got to yeah, act. So I, I went about something. the, I went about a trailer, the, 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 the trailer that I now do Holy Smoke in. Yeah. So anyway, so started the Holy Smoke trailer. Uh, started out as actually a different concept. It was Wrigleyville. Uh, I remember I don't think that. You remember it that was one. like yeah. Sh- uh, yeah, Chicago, Chicago style, style hot dogs. Yeah. 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 yeah Chicago style hot dogs. That shit failed. Did like not in three do months. well. No, I didn't do no. well. No. Not no, we here. make no money. It was like zero. Like some days were zero. Some days were like 50 bucks, 100 uh-huh. bucks. I'm like, okay, we can't do this. You know, it wasn't going to work out. So it failed like in three, four months. And then we did Holy Smoke and got it popping. How did it feel to fail at something? Like, how did it feel? Like what? Because, you know, it makes or break some people. Like you either, all right, what's the next thing? Or like, eh, I'm just going to stop altogether. I don't know who said it, but you need to. Hey, Mike Tyson said in one of his interviews, you got to hit rock. Tyson, you got to yeah. hit rock bottom yeah. to to come up. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. and then for me, that's true also. I mean, like, I think that the failure, like, I think failure and having your back up against the wall for me is where is where I you work shine. better. Yeah, yeah where you yeah. shine. Yeah. I'm pretty lazy in a lot of ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm more of a. I feel that. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel that. No, I'm yeah, lazy. It's, I'm a, it's, I don't want to work hard for shit. You no, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'll work mentally hard and I'll, right. you know, come up with a plan and stuff like that, and I'll get my hands dirty mm-hmm. early on, but yeah. I'm going into everything that I do to where I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna work hard for six months to a year you know, bust my ass and be here like on the ground, like boots on the ground, like physically doing the work. Right. But with the goal of getting somebody in that place to have that headache for me Mm -hmm. so I can focus on growing the business. Yeah. You know, Um, and they say it's that term is work on your business, not in your business. Exactly. So you're taking that in. And and I feel like that's how you've been able to grow so quickly with all these other places. That exact thing. It was a book that, uh, that our friend, uh, my wife and I's friend, Dan, he, he had sent me a book. It's called The E-Myth. Mm-hmm. And like one of the main chapters in this book talks about exactly that. Like don't work in your business, work on your business. Yeah. You cannot work on your business and grow it if you're inside of it doing the day-to-day, right. you know, boring or hard tasks. You know what I'm saying? If you're cooking in your kitchen, right. how are you going to focus on managing your books or or marketing your business? Marketing. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't do any of that. But at, at but what about in the beginning? What would you say to people that are starting out? You got you kind of have to, right? Well, you need to... To start. You, you need to wear all the hats to start. Right. You know? But I think that the important thing for, for starting out, for any, anybody like getting into a small business or, you know, medium-sized business, whatever it is, whether it's retail or medical or anything, you know, mm-hmm. online based, it's all the same stuff. You just need to figure out your systems, you know what I'm saying? Like how the, all the operations, you know what I'm saying? Who's mm-hmm. going to handle the books? Who's going to do this? Don't try and do it all yourself. Don't manage your own books. If you don't mm-hmm. have a degree in mm-hmm. finance or Absolutely. some type of math accounting, don't attempt to, <laughs> to manage your own uh-huh. books and don't hire your <laughs> aunt and uncle, your tia, your tio to manage your mm-hmm. books for you. Hire mm-hmm. a professional. It's not that expensive yeah. for you know, a decent for a small size business, the books are a hundred bucks a month. There's plenty Worth of online it. online stuff to to you know, hundred bucks, fifty bucks, one hundred fifty to manage your books. Once right. you start making a few million dollars, yeah. it's really not that expensive. Even even then, it's like five hundred bucks a month to do your bookkeeping. Um, and then there's a lot of other aspects to that. Your marketing, unless you have a marketing background and you really know what you're doing, then don't try and just you know do it all yourself. Picking up your phone and posting reels and stuff like that is one part of marketing. That's not all of marketing. There's right. web development, you know, your Google, SEO, you know, p- uh, paid ads. I mean, ads, the, the, your TV, yeah. the, the the list goes on. It's never ending. I mean, you know, graphic design. Mm-hmm. So obviously, I mean, not even me, somebody who has, you know, a decent knowledge of, of how to market businesses and stuff like that. I don't know how to do graphic design. Right. You know, I don't know how to do a lot of things. I suck at Photoshop. I'm a good photographer. I'm a good videographer. Uh, but that's kind of about it. You know what I mean? Like all the other skilled uh, tasks that, that, you know, are needed when it comes to marketing a business, I outsource. Mm-hmm. I mean, and now you have apps like uh, Fiverr, you know, or yeah. Fiverr or whatever. Um, you know, so that's where I, I shop, do a lot of shopping in there. I have designers that I work mm-hmm. with on there to make it. So if I need a new logo, I got two or three yeah, designers that I like working with like. that I send it to and then they make me the logo. Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. So yeah. anyway, so removing myself from the truck, Help me blow it up to what it is to, to what it would have, to what it was you know to mm-hmm. once Wrigleyville failed it was the good it was a good wake up call to you know get my shit together basically it yeah. was like hey look like I can't you, it ain't like I'm just gonna let the bank go and repo the trailer right you know what I'm saying because yeah. there's value there yeah but you know it was my dad had, had told me he was like 
he didn't like the idea of me buying the trailer because I was in the middle of opening the bar. And he's like, you know, you, um, he didn't like, he's like, you're spreading yourself too thin. Mm-hmm. Don't buy, I told you not to buy that food truck. And now here you are, you failed. <laughs> you know, he's like, but, but he also yeah. motivated me to tell me, he's like, you know, you got to keep it going. Yeah. You know what I mean? My wife, same thing. Like she's in the middle of it. Actually, our daughter was, she was still pregnant at the time. It was towards the end of her pregnancy with, with uh, my first daughter. And we're in like February, you know what I'm saying? And going mm-hmm. through this hardship right now with, with the truck and making the decision to close it down and stuff. And then the timing too. And it was, like, the, beginning so it was the beginning of COVID. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, um, yeah. hurdles. Yeah. Big hurdles. Yeah. So, you know, we, we I have family support, you know, and I'm like, all right, like I told my, my employee, I'm like, make me a brisket. Like we're going to do brisket tacos tomorrow. And uh, we did that, and we sold out in the first couple hours. It really? wasn't a whole lot, but it was the more money. We made then a you, grand off of one brisket, made a thousand bucks. More than you ever like made in the yeah, other Yeah, because we chopped it down. It was a big yeah. giant brisket order. We yeah. chopped it down. It was like 800 bucks. Mm-hmm. But we made tacos out of it and just yelling out the window, like, hey, we got brisket tacos. And then people were lining up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, we did had hot dogs and couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, but with brisket tacos in Texas. Brisket yeah. hit different here. You yeah, know? but especially in a taco. It's like the yeah. two of, of the best of both worlds right. in, in Texas. Right. You get both of them in, in one. So, yeah. it was an easy sell. And then we just started moving crazy weight when it came to the, the brisket. I remember, like, it was the second weekend or something like that. We moved, like, 1,500 pounds of beef in, like, in, in, Sold out the HBs in two days. <laughs> no, it was a lot. I mean, I don't know how many briskets that was. Yeah. It was probably like thirty or forty briskets, something like yeah. that. Uh, but in two days, that's you wild. know, it's insane. It's a lot. Yeah. Of, it's, it's a good amount of money. Absolutely. Um, and this was like at the very beginning of COVID. I mean, this is week one. You know, of the uh, and then the following week, the city shut down. <sighs> so there you were, like, man, we're just about to get up yeah. off the ground, and then this happens. Yeah, but that that was also like a blessing Great. because. Yeah. It, it sucks because a lot of people, you know, like lost their lives and, and you know, uh, lost you know their we, businesses. we lost their businesses. Like a lot of people lost their businesses. I mean, yeah. everybody's just your mandatory shut down. The city wasn't yeah. giving you no money to close. Right. They're just like, you're closed. You're closed. That's and it. you're like, what the hell? So, yeah. you know, but for us, it was kind of kind of a good thing because we were as a food trailer you're you're mm-hmm. built to go right so exactly. so there's no indoor dining no our employees were wearing masks yeah. we were we were in compliance yeah. we were good to go so um it took off you know the the food truck did well we crushed it you know for the for a couple of years doing that and that helped me get el camino open how would you say it is working with family? Because you know some people advise against it, some people are for it. Like, how do you? I'm like, but you've always worked with your family, so I'm like, I guess it just works for you. Guys. Yeah, but they hate me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, so. um, I'm gonna, I, man. You know, people are comfortable, and it goes both ways. Like, yeah, I'm not good to work with with my family. It's, it's not just I them; see. it's me. It's it's that it's right. them and me. Yeah, we've done it. We do it out of love. Uh, my family, dude, they've helped me so much. Like every single one of them, I my know. wife's family, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? Everybody has come together in some way to help get it off the ground. Mm-hmm. And I think that like, I don't know if a lot of people out there are, are like have the, you know, everybody has different dynamics with their family and stuff. Right. right? So, right. so it might work out for you, but maybe for that person, it's the worst right. idea ever. Yeah. Um, I think that it's not a great idea for anyone to do it. I would advise against it unless you feel like, you know, you could make it work. Yeah. But I think in most scenarios, and even in my, including mine, yeah. it, no matter how close you are, there's going to be an end to it at some point because it starts to affect, you know, your personal lives and how you right. are with each other at all times. You know, right. my sister kind of always kept uh, some boundaries. You know what I'm saying? She would come help, you know, out of just love. Or if I needed, if I really needed help, I'd right. be like, yo, can you come help me in the truck? And she'd show up. She'd get off of her shift at the car dealership come show up and work. Jess was dealing with a newborn at the time. So, you know, the, she, yeah. she was, she was helping taking phone calls, doing stuff at home, but you know, in the truck, it was my mom and my sister, yeah. you know, Jess tried to come to the truck a couple times, you know what I'm saying? But it was no, just difficult dealing with hard. a new baby and all that yeah, stuff. It was hard. Not. <laughs> um, but she was holding it down at home and getting a lot of the, she was helping with prep. <laughs> Jess was at the house making mac yeah. and cheese and stuff like that. But you know, don't tell don't tell the health department that. <laughs> no, but you know, it was clean. We you know we have a night, really nice kitchen. You do what you gotta do. All that do, stuff. But you, you know? do what you gotta do. Yeah, I mean, you, really you know, they're do. making noodles at the house and then yeah. they're dropping it off at the at the, at the truck. It was a shit show. Yeah. You know? Um and my mom actually quit her job to come on and work with me, you know, full time. I, I was know, like, I remember I was like, seeing yeah. 
Elena? Yeah. But she's a cook. She's she's, <laughs> yeah, she, she's yeah. a good natural cook. So mm-hmm. she was making brisket, you know, so making mac and cheese, doing everything. Yeah. And we had bought a uh, rented out a commissary kitchen at that time too. So I'm like, look, uh, I got a kitchen. I got everything we need. I'll pay you more than what your current job is paying mm-hmm. you. Like come help me run this business. You know right. what I'm saying? Full-time pay, you know, full-time work, all that stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll manage the truck stuff. You manage the kitchen. You make mm-hmm. me my food and get it to the truck and we sell it. That's it. Yeah. So anyway, it's, it was great while it lasted. It got me set up to where we are now. Right. It was the stepping stone. But it definitely isn't, it's not the best thing to do. You know what I'm saying? When you're mm-hmm. fighting with your mom all the time or she's fighting with me or I'm fighting with her. And then, you know, she's highly, you know, takes highly, uh, she's highly offended by, you know, things that I bring up, uh, you know, or, or certain ways that I say them. Because right. you communicate with who you love Absolutely. different yeah. than you do with with your your friends so, or your, well, yeah, uh, your or employees. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, you can't cross boundaries with people you don't know, you know what I'm saying? So she can yell at me, I can yell back. Right. And it's just like, it's always conflict, you know what right. I'm saying? So it, it got to the point to where um, I just didn't want that with my mom no more, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and I was already kind of checked out from the food truck life because I was already, you know, on my second bar and had mm-hmm. one very successful one. And here I am working on my second concept, which is also a food truck park yeah. and cocktail bar. I'm like, I don't need you to work no more, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't need you to, 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 to run the truck no more. You know, I'll take care of you, I'll help you out whenever you need it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, but I don't want to work together anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was a mutually good thing for both of us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, there's other things go along with it. You you know, it's it's sad to to step out of a business and think Mm -hmm. that it's going to die out or it's going to fail or whatever. Right. But uh, but it was good. Now, me and my mom are, 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 you know, a lot better than we were back then right you know and same thing with my sister i mean you know you got to have those boundaries and stuff like that because when you're it's like living with somebody it's 10 times worse than living with somebody being in a business with your family is like you're glued at the hip i mean Mm -hmm. financially in every kind of way you know what i'm saying and if there's disagreements on what disagreements everything it's like i own the business but yet my mom can have a say yeah. that a normal employee wouldn't even go there with right. you know she would they would never go there with me because it's not their place but yeah. she's my mom so she can yeah. say whatever so anyway um yeah i would advise against it but i would say you know if you got to do it make it work yeah. try and create boundaries but you know um it's tough it's just yeah. it's, it's going to be tough no matter what your parents are gonna you know tell you what they think good or bad, good or, or bad. you yeah. know or their their <laughs> and their opinions are usually biased because they're looking at things from you know, a different perspective, Absolutely. you know, you're their kid or your yeah. siblings are looking at it right. from a different perspective and it goes into other stuff. I don't, ha- I haven't had this, this many problems with my family or anything like that when it comes to money and stuff, we're all, you know, have a good respect for each other yeah. on that level. But I've seen it firsthand, you know, yeah, where, where people, you start making money and people start acting funny, mm-hmm. you know, thinking that time. you, you hire your, mostly in friends. I've seen it with friends and mm-hmm. I've, I've experienced this where you hire friends and then they feel like they you owe them more right, or like more. you know if the job is a 12 dollar an hour job in uh-huh. Texas and San Antonio that they should be making 16 right. 17 18 whatever you know what i'm saying so that that type of stuff happens pretty often especially in friendships and families you know to where um, when they see you making money it's a different type of entitlement than what a normal employee a feels. A normal part, like somebody that you really don't know. Somebody, somebody that you don't know, yeah. yeah, because they're just coming to get a job and right. and they're happy with what the market rate is. Mm-hmm. But you hire friends and family, they could shoot you in the foot because they'll expect a lot more out of you. So when you want to build a team, what would you say um, is helpful? So should you partner with friends or that's just a zone that we stay out of? Or how do you... No. If you want to you partner, know? if you want to partner with anybody, it's a good way to lose a friend. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. I haven't seen I have not seen a single example of best friends or friends that can right. start a business together that has that has lasted. I know I it's been done. I'm sure it's been done, but I haven't seen it ever. Yeah. So in my experience, if you want to, you know, have a breakup with somebody and not and, <laughs> and probably never, never talk the to them again. again when things go bad, because they will go bad. Yeah. You know, then then yeah, go into business with friends. You know, but uh I think that I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. Um, but there has to be somebody in charge. That's kind of like the over, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll do business with friends. I'm actually in the middle of doing a business with a friend right now. Right. But it's a very clear cut and dry relationship. It's like, Hey, you are my partner, but you're a working partner. This is my role, but this is your role. Like I'll do this business with you and give you equity, but you need to do these roles and it's on paper. Write it down. Get contracts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No handshake stuff. Like this is what I expect of you. This is what you're going to expect of me. 
And this is how we're going to work together. Like a business. Yeah, for sure. So what about people that are like, hey, I have an idea and this person that I know wants to invest. How would you how can you make that work? Because sometimes, you know, you don't have the capital to start. You have some of the capital, I, but you don't have everything. I think that that's another way that mm -hmm. people shoot themselves in the foot yeah. and, and can get, um, get in a little bit of trouble with it. I think you have to treat money. If you're going to get money from an investor, yeah. you need to treat it no different than you would from a bank. So you need to research what what the what the going commercial rates are on on, on lending and stuff like that, right. and treat it like that. Because like if you start giving out equity and you'd be like, you know, the investor is like, well, let me invest in you and this and this. That don't do 50 50. Why am I going to 50 50 with somebody who's not going to do any work? Right. Injecting money into a business doesn't give you the the right to you know everything that that business makes. You know what I'm right. saying? Because I mean, again, my my scenario is a little bit different. I can go to a bank. And pull money out, mm -hmm. and I'm going to pay X amount back. If right. I want to borrow 100k, I know that my payback on commercial lending is probably going to be 130k, 140k, right. maybe 150, because it's a lot higher rates. Right. They don't do it the way uh, uh, consumer lending is. It's not like mm -hmm. a credit card, right? Okay. So it's like, hey, you borrowed 100, your payback's 140 over the next year, two years. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. It's a lot more expensive it to is. to borrow wow. commercial, um, mm -hmm. but it's a write off at the end of the day. Right. In a business, if somebody's going to invest in you and be like, "Hey, I want to back your clothing line and stuff like that," okay, cool. You, you, you could you need to do set you know agreement on right. what that payback looks like, and if it's equity, that needs to be a realistic amount. Don't right. don't do don't fifty fifty with nobody that isn't going to do any work. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because mm -hmm. money doesn't entitle you to entitle you to fifty percent of ownership of a business. Mm. Usually, people that do that, I'll tell you, it never goes good. That, or okay. You find success and then you resent the person that loaned you money because you're out here busting your ass, you know, growing a right. business, building an empire. And all they did was put in some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Well, that's good. I mean, that's stuff that needs to be talked about. I had no idea. I was just like, well, you know, it's how do you, how yeah. do, you do that? It's it's all the <laughs> yeah. navigating. Yeah, it, is, it is a lot to navigate. So, yeah. So so partners and and investors and stuff like that that's that's not the set in stone way to go obviously everything is negotiable everything mm -hmm. is like you know customizable but as far as how i do business from what i've learned i'll never 50 50 with nobody that is not putting in work you know what right. i'm saying like if they're gonna come in and be a general manager like like they are the ones running that business absolutely yeah right all day 40 60 40 50 50 whatever you know what i'm saying like I even do something to where maybe I'm minority. If I if all I'm doing is is investing in the business, but giving my consult, my, you know, consulting mm -hmm. and and my marketing, you know, uh, uh, experience and stuff like that, and helping yeah. with the business in that way, I'll take minority ownership and put money in, yeah. right? But it's going to be for somebody that maybe has a really big brand and, and they right. don't have the funding or the knowledge on how to open up a brick and mortar. But I know that you know there's a, a guys that I work with or whatever that that park the Pete's Chicken. Right. I'd probably back them in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's got to be clear cut right. agreement that, hey, you're operating this business. This is these are my roles. And, and um, you know, that that's how it's going to work. Right. And especially someone that you see opportunity yeah. with to grow. But I can't tell you how many times like somebody will message <laughs> you. People, people are weird, but they'll message you. What will they they'll say? message me randomly. Be like, yo, like I got money to invest or whatever. And we're, however mm -hmm. they got it, it's their business. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, they, they got money to invest. Let me put in. People always think that you could just buy into a bar. And or I you guess can buy that's, into what, that's what I thought. Like, OK. And that's why I ask these questions is like you can just. Let's say, what about silent investors? You know, how does that even work to where let's say, hey, I want to give you some money to start. And you, you know, how does that even that's why I asked the question is I, I would say that that's where you have to have a realistically mm -hmm. a realistic split on the equity. A silent investor is no different than a bank. Yeah. The bank is a silent investor. Right. Mm -hmm. So if the silent investor is going to fund the operation or put a good chunk of change down. You know what I'm saying? To, to get the doors open. I mean, let's just say it costs like 300 k to get a bar open yeah. or something like that, right? And the silent investor is going to fund every every bit of that. I think that's a good, you know, uh, uh, amount to, you know, say something maybe like 25%, yeah. right, of the of the profits, even 30%, something yeah. like that. But, like, that's with no that's with no working role. Right. You know, like, they're not right. doing anything. Not and doing that's anything. the max of what I would give. Yeah. You know, for, for mm -hmm. something like that. Because, honestly, that's kind of the max of what I would take. I would probably shoot for 40 be like, right. hey, I'll fund your whole, you know, your whole restaurant or something mm -hmm. like that, right? But, but, uh, you know, you know, let's do a bar together or whatever. You know, we'll 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 sixty forty it. But yeah. realistically, I think seventy thirty is a good split on that, where they're gonna do the majority of the work, take all the headache. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff. You, ha I have liability as a silent investor, but 
I'm not doing the legwork. You know exactly. what I mean? They are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 30%, I think, is fair for that to fund mm-hmm. the whole thing. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But, you know, because the bank is not much different. On 300 k from a bank, they're probably going to want 450 payback, something like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Depending mm-hmm. on, you know, what your scenario is. But, yeah, that's pretty much how, how I see it working. But, again, I've heard other things. Yeah. I've, I've seen other deals. I have a couple deal, you know, a, a thing going on right now where it's something similar to that. They're building out the whole thing, but they want, like, 50-50. You know, mm. for the first two years and then it goes down from there. Then it trickles down on them and, and builds up on me, you know, so you, it's all negotiable. It's all customizable. But I think like, you know, definitely reaching out to somebody that has had experience in it absolutely, and yeah. has been burned even it, or, or well, right. you know, like on both yeah, ends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I've had to, to, you know, be cutthroat in deals and, 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 you know, things didn't go the way they were negotiated or mm-hmm. where they were the way they were agreed on. And I got to pull back and collect assets or you know completely pull the rug from under and stuff like that i mean i've been on both sides of it to where i've been screwed out of deals and i've never screwed anybody out of a deal but i've had to enforce an agreement you know what i'm saying like where it's like hey guys this is what we agreed on this is what you signed for this is what you you said you were going to do when you when you came to the table and you're not doing that so i'm out you know what i mean yeah so and you're very business minded so i feel like a lot of this also comes not naturally to you because you've had experience in it, right, as well. But you're very business-minded. Like I said, entre- always been an entrepreneur type of person. So what would you tell somebody like, I don't know, I guess myself or a, let's say a female. And I say female only because we're, a lot of the times we don't approach business in the same way that maybe a guy will, right? Y'all are a lot, a lot more forward and say what you guys, you know, it's very forward and we're might not be like that. We might be a little more afraid to go and do that. So how would you say, would you recommend, let's say someone like me or another girl like that wanted to start something? What would you say for her to start? How do you build, go about building a team or how do you go about doing anything really? Uh, I don't really think there's necessarily like, you know, different between men like and women too much. I see sister. what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But Naomi, is a lot like me. I mean, she's in yeah. car sales, so she has a more direct approach with things. You know what I'm saying? She yeah. doesn't beat around the bush. she is around guys a lot too. And she's yeah. been in sales and she's around you. So I'm sure she's learned a lot from yeah. you. Oh, you for know? sure. For so sure. that's what I'm saying. It's obviously it's a lot easier for her, a little bit easier for her because she has someone like you. Yeah. Like. That, and she has her, you know, her, her sales experience, I think, you know, yeah. really set it off for her yeah. because she can go in and she knows how to negotiate things right. and, and work on deals and stuff like that. Uh, I think, you know, it's more of a personality thing to where it's maybe, you know, I think a lot of women can relate to it. I think that uh, and on her thing is maybe the the uncertainty of like, is it going to work out? Should yeah. I quit my job to do this? Right. It's not just a woman thing. I see a lot of men that have right, the same right. the same problem or whatever. But with her, you know, that was kind of uh, what she was dealing with, where it was like, OK, like, you know, just pulling the trigger on something mm-hmm. and making it happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. versus me. I'll jump in head first. And, exactly. You know, yeah. We wait a little like bit that. longer. Like we yeah. think a little bit. I think, more. You, I think, you know, yeah, if you could say that, you, you know, you'll think through more. Right. Right. I right. mean, even in my marriage, that's kind of what yeah. that's what we deal yeah. with is like I'm the chaotic one, the one that. You know what I'm saying? I can't find my keys or I can't find something <laughs> or whatever. My wife brings a lot of organization to our mm-hmm. lives and, and structure, but at the same time also like caution with things. You know what I'm saying? More of the like, grounding. Yeah, more of the know? grounding and stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean, they're both good to have. You Absolutely. know, and I, I, personally, I think, you know, that trait, I'm envious of that because Absolutely. it would probably save me a lot of headaches yeah. if I had a little bit of, you know, caution. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or if I had a little, if I was able to think through, I'm, I'm working on that still. I still just jump into things sometimes. Mm-hmm. But now that I've had a few fuck ups, I I'm more careful. But that's but, why that's your partner because you're not, you know, you're not gonna have all these things. So that's yeah, why you exactly. Need a, a you look for that a good, ba- yeah, you a look good for balance, that. You look for in, a balance in your partnership. But, but for for people in general that you know, if you find yourself struggling to to you know make something happen in business and stuff like that, I think you just kind of gotta just make that jump you know what i'm saying yeah. make that initial jump just do it yeah and mm-hmm. also you don't got to go big on everything if it's food True. related don't buy a food truck go, go do a pop-up go get mm-hmm. do the legwork to get a permit uh, uh or if you're selling clothes or something like that yeah. go do a pop-up at a farmer's market you want to sell yeah. sport sporting clothes and leggings and stuff like that there's plenty of brands that have started off of you know pop-ups and and farmer's markets types yeah. type setups right mm-hmm. before you go and, and blow a bunch of money on a retail space right. and spend thousands of dollars you know a month you know inventory trying to and inventory everything. and the whole nine yeah. start small especially in clothing you could start online mm-hmm. you know you can do farmer's markets you can do you know flea markets whatever there's tons of ways to do it you could do just instagram you could do shopify all that stuff yeah. if you're starting food 
don't go buy a food truck <laughs> off the bat. If you've never done it before, don't go big. Yeah, don't go big. Start so, small. Okay, you know? start. So then that's but a good. That's a good way. I think the start key is small. just do it. Do like, it. Like just do it. Yeah. Do something. Obviously, buying a truck and all that stuff is a bit is a big jump. So, um, I'd say start small, but just do it. You know, just do it. you want to sell cookies, bake cookies, go <laughs> sell them. See if you like doing that. Yes. And then try doing a farmer's market. And you can do that mm. for a year or six months. And you really like that, then go buy a food truck. And mm. if you think, or save up and do the brick and mortar, right? Yeah. But I think the key is just uh, just saying, fuck it and jump in and, and do don't it. be scared. Yeah. How do you stand out in a market of so many different things going on and just on social media as a business? How would you say that you guys stood out and how 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 do you stand out if you want to do a go- video with Ice JJ Fish? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> nah, Do a viral video. <laughs> man, marketing, you know, IG reels, yeah. TikTok, all that stuff. I mean, create content. Um, but even if people create content, sometimes people's content isn't good or it's not. I don't know. I think How consistency. Do you, just consistency. Continue, continue to make the content. And if it doesn't, if it's not working, find you know, another way. Find another way. Make yeah. a, you know, make a shift and, and yeah. try a different approach to your content and stuff. Um, I mean, that's the key. I mean, you know, it's just like operating the business. Oh. Just do it, right? With the content on the content side of it, if you're not getting in front of your customers on the digital platforms like Google and Instagram and TikTok and all that, then how are they going to find you? Yeah, if I right. can't Google, if you're not on the like, you know, if it's food and it's not best barbecue in San Antonio, yeah. if you can't find it on Google, chances are you're not going to get a lot of foot traffic and stuff. It's on right? the 80th page. Yeah, on exactly. Google. Yeah. So anyway, but that that's that, that's my advice. But we're coming up to the end of the. Uh, the video wow, that, that it allows for quick. but it was a cool i appreciate you you yeah, know coming up chop it up me. this is good for me too i need it i need to start doing more we try this. it again maybe we could you know ask questions if you yeah. got questions for karen and you got questions for me we can love that. give it another round in a, in a in a few weeks but appreciate y'all thank you thank you and we'll see y'all later